we're gonna put all these parts in that truck in one video. Let's get started. I want to take a moment here and say jack stand placement and jack are critical, all right? On the frame, make sure you're on a good solid concrete surface like I'm on here. I've got both jack stands under on the frame and then I've got my jack, my main jack still in the center uh, holding weight. And then as a third precaution, I'm gonna take the wheels and tires off and slide them under the frame underneath the truck. There's a few things we need to get out of our way. Um, this is your ABS sensor, and you just take a little flat blade and pop that out like that, and up here, and then up in here, you kind of feel around for it. Pop that one out, and you got a connector right here. And that is for your ABS. We need to remove this bracket here. You'll see why in just a minute. By the way, that is 10 millimeter. Looking at the top of the caliper, the bolt you're wanting to remove is right there. And there's another one just like it further down below. And they are 21 millimeter. can pick this entire apparatus up, set it out of the way, and not damage our brake line while we're at it. That upper ball joint nut is 18 millimeter. bottom one is a 24 millimeter. Oh, my lovely wife has joined us so she gets to hear me say some choice words just kidding <clears throat> there we go now if we can just get Woo -wee! victory we're gonna set this to the side for a moment these sway bar bushings are part of what we're going to replace and the bolt on the bottom is a 15 millimeter So you can see how bad these bushings really are. They're trashed. There we go. You want to go ahead and unload your torsion bars on this truck before taking that shock absorber loose. It's got a key right there that holds tension via that bolt. You don't want to try to loosen this 
while the truck is sitting on its wheels because you'll, you'll mess it up. But you wanna go ahead and loosen this torsion bolt here and another one right over there before removing the shock absorbers, okay? Up top, you can use a 15 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter wrench here to hold this top. And then you just, I'm using a ratcheting one to take the top of the shock loose. That one came out pretty good, as did that one. These little uh, offsets here, what they use to align the truck we go back of course obviously you're gonna to have to take the truck in for an alignment when you're done so we're gonna go ahead and work that out see that and so yeah right after you get done with this job make sure you have yourself an alignment uh, shop ready to rock and roll because this truck is not gonna drive it's not gonna drive that uh, straight but here we go oh my beautiful wife just arrived with a monster energy drink just as I get this sucker out Look at that. God is good, folks. All right, let's talk about doing this lower ball joint. So first thing, this uh, CV axle is just in my way. Like I'm, I could prop it up here and it's, it's just gonna fall right back down. But it's a good idea to go and inspect this thing when we got it down, make sure the boots are all good. And this one does appear to be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach a bungee strap to this sucker and I'm gonna hook it up here and just get it out of my way. This kit is uh, compliments of Advance Auto. Thank you, Advance Auto, for having this available for me to rent. And uh, this is what it is, and this is what it looks like. It's a tool for removing ball joints because if you try to buy this lower control arm, it's gonna set you back way north of 100 bucks a piece. So while the other uppers are cheap enough to just go ahead and replace the whole thing, these lowers, we're gonna press these out. All right, I've got this tool set up. Basically, you have a giant C-clamp you find the collar that fits around the outside edge. See, like our ball joint, the edge of it's right there. So we want to find a collar that fits around this. And then you put the threaded side on the top of the ball joint because they press in from the bottom, okay? So I got the cheater bar out, three quarters stepping down to a half on a seven eighths. And uh, let's put some hurt on this thing and see if we can't pop it out. Y'all send a prayer for me. Hallelujah. Just like a little baby in the nest. The old ball joint is out. I think it was time to replace it. What do y'all think? Hello. <laughs> oh, dirt can get in anywhere it wants. Here is our new one. We want to put them upside each other, make sure that they compare uh, as far as shoulder height, etc. This, by the way, is a product I got from Detroit Axle. That is an X6693, and you'll get two of these in the rebuild kit. To press in our new ball joint, we need a collar here or a sleeve that fits the shoulder of our new ball joint. And you can see I've removed the dust cover. They're gonna need a bottom cap to press from the bottom and a top cap to press from the top. All right, so they go on like this. You're gonna take this top cap, you can see it's caved out concave we're going to set it right on top and then we're going to take this sleeve here we're going to drop our ball joint in the sleeve you can see it fits the shoulder right there and we're going to drop that into this bottom kit that we have our zerk fitting hole right here and that zerk fitting hole corresponds to a divot in the lower control arm so we're going to get this rigged up and i'll show you the press in and it's flush with the bottom here. Let's remove the C-clamp, see what we did. Hot dog. 
here's what it looks like from the bottom. And while we're there, don't forget to go ahead and put that dust cap back on. Because if you do forget, trust me, you'll be doing this job again real soon. Now we can go ahead and put our Zerk fitting in. Requires a little bit of patience, but there we go. We'll snug that up, be ready to rock and roll. We're gonna tackle the tie rod, uh, tie rod ends. And you can see that one's pretty worn and you can see here. And this is a 340,000 mile truck. So yeah, it's gonna need all these parts. So uh, I think the easiest way is gonna be to remove this entire bar. And so we have to take it loose over there from the steering gear box. And uh, we're also going to remove, there's two bolts. See the nuts right, get the camera to focus. See those nuts right up there. We're gonna remove the two bolts holding that. And then we should be able to go ahead and pull this entire bar out. So we're gonna try a little air chisel here, see if we can knock it loose. folks and since we're replacing this arm completely it's not going to matter that we beat that all up now we'll say i need you to pay close attention to this you see how there's a bunch of small splines and a big one make sure that when your pitman arm your new pitman arm goes back in that it is exactly big groove to big groove i believe this is a three groove we'll confirm that in just a minute looking at the new part but before you take this down all the way make sure that this didn't move and that your big groove inside here lines up with your big groove here and also in the other spots. We've also got to take the steering stabilizer loose and we're going to put our 18 millimeter wrench on top of that. And there we go should pop right out of this holder right there there we go you can see the whole bar after disassembling that pitman arm and taking that shock loose the whole arm is now loose we got to go to the other side now and remove that uh, other it looks like another pitman arm it's just an idler just sitting in some bearings in a bracket wouldn't you know it they changed this back to standard on us right here and these are actually 13 sixteenths. There we go. They really don't want you getting it out that easily, do they? There we go. See that idler coming out? Whoo, Lord. He is good, folks, he is good. We are presented with yet another challenge. We have to get this idler past this line right here. Hot dog. Now, we can rebuild that entire linkage. Here is the entire steering linkage in the exact position it fits in the truck. Now, now I'm gonna mock up all the pieces we're gonna replace to make this nice and tight. There you have it. All the parts we're gonna replace if we're putting this linkage back in the front of the truck. On the pitman arm it is, as I told you earlier, if you look closely inside the pitman arm, you have wide teeth, and then your narrow teeth, your normal splines, and then another wide tooth, and then more splines, and then a third wide tooth. So you see that it's a, a three tooth. Make sure these three wide teeth go exactly in the wide teeth slots underneath the truck at the end of your steering gear box. Your new tie rod end is gonna come with two pieces, okay, like this. And you're gonna have to put your Zerk fitting in here. But it helps if you look at how many threads are here on the old tie rod end. So you can thread this in pretty much the same thread count and that'll get it pretty darn close to uh, toe before you 
drive it to the alignment shop for official. So after a lot of jackhammering, I transferred over to my trailer to work. I've got, of course, this is the one you saw me jackhammer off. This one, however, I jackhammered on it and couldn't get it to budge. You can see I have the new one installed now. And you just tighten it up with a adjustable wrench right here. But look at how hard I had to jackhammer this piece down to get it off. Look at that. Looks like something out of Terminator. Yeah, that's 22. While we got this apart, let's go ahead and grease all these joints. Okay, fellow mechanics, I'm gonna save you about uh, 15 minutes of work and maybe a lot of frustration. This is the factory OEM. You see it's only got about three threads sticking out of the bottom of this idler. This is the aftermarket one. You see how it is ground off right there because it had this extra shank on it. Now I understand this is so you can put a wrench on and hold it while you tighten that nut. But what it does is this length of shank right here keeps this from clearing the subframe of your truck underneath the engine, the the the, um, the valley bracket, so you can't get these two bolts in. So I had this whole piece in, only to discover I had to pull it completely back out, just like I get my uh, my grinder and cut this off so that it was short and stubby like this. We'll, we'll say this much, y'all. You might want to go ahead and negotiate with some help to come help you get this piece in because it's no joke. My lovely bride, who I'm very thankful for. I said, Lord, send me an angel. She stepped outside, so, you know, hey. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Anyway, she's holding the other side of this as I finagle these bolts in. 
because this whole linkage steering piece is very heavy and it's very awkward. So when you're trying to put these bolts in, you may, uh, you may say a few words. I'll just tell you that. So oh, thank you, honey. Uh -huh. She doesn't like the camera, but she's, she's a lot easier on the camera than I am. Maybe we'll get her in front of the camera one day. Okay, honey, if you could let down on the steering linkage on your side, just let down toward the ground. There you go. Okay. And just pull back up a little bit. There you go. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. You're a lady and a scholar. <laughs> I don't care what the kids do. <laughs> there really is only one way it's gonna go on. You'll just have to rotate that Pittman arm around until you find it. Don't forget to put your stabilizer shock back in. Let's talk about replacing these hubs. They're not that difficult. You just got one, two, three, four, 15 millimeter bolts and the hub is off. Take care not to bend this up. The brake shield. As far as reassembling the new one goes, there's an easy way to remember as you're putting this back together that your ABS sensor wire is always going to be on the top. And what is the top? Well, the top is where your brake line bolts to the top of this. Your brake shield is always going to go toward the front of the vehicle because remember your brake caliper and pad apparatus sits here. Start everything by hand. And then let her rip. And at this point in the video, I'm going to advise you to look up the torque spec and torque these four bolts. Once you've torqued these four bolts, this is what you got and you're gonna to wanna to thread this ABS sensor up behind the brake shield. Now that we got those hubs together, let's talk about putting the upper control arm on. Now, if I had one complaint about the upper control arm, as you can clearly see, there is no greasable zerk on this one. So, uh, I mean, I guess you call it a complaint, but they're not that hard to replace, so we'll roll with it. You have these guide, these guide bolts here that are flat on one side. And then these, these um, cams or whatever you wanna call them have slots. You can see there's a pin pinhole right there where this was. So when I put this bolt in, I'm going to attempt to get this to line up pretty close to where it was. Take that bottom ball joint, move it as far forward as you can. 
gonna let your axle down in like that. And put that nut on. Kind of as a hold you in place situation. While I wrestle with this CV axle. There it goes. And I'm gonna bump this little boy up and back down in the top. <clears throat> Try and start the nut in the upper ball joint under there. So now we want to go ahead and put on our sway bar kit. Make sure you lift your ABS wire up and out of your way before you install your brake rotor. I'm kind of holding the caliper up above here, but there's a reason you want to do that. You hate to get all the way through this and discover that you've lifted all these heavy components into place and your ABS wire is pinched down below all that. And we're gonna come back and torque these to proper specs, of course. So don't forget while you're here, to go ahead and reinstall your brake line holder here. Remember this from way at the beginning. Repeat the process up here. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Camera's being a little droopy. Me, I can understand being droopy. My camera, though, I don't know what's going on. Last, certainly not least, remember this guy? Yep, this is your ABS sensor. All right, we're gonna clip him back in here, and then we're gonna come around here. We're gonna push it in here, and back up here. There's gonna be a hole right here beside your your tower, your shock tower. Push it in there, okay? So clip push clip and then reach up here and find your other end make sure you do it right clip that in reach back and find the, the spot in the frame push that in i know it seems like a lot of extra work but it'll keep your abs sensor from getting caught in your tire you'll be glad you did it Don't forget to go through there and uh, torque everything according to spec. Like uh, I've still got to torque my caliper uh, bracket and I've still got to torque that center nut on the CV axle. And then I've got to bring up my torsion bar bolts to the original suspension height. So don't forget to do those things. And finally, take it to the alignment shop. This vehicle isn't ready to drive every day. Uh, I've still got to do the other side, of course. And when I'm done with the other side, I'm going to take it straight to the alignment shop because uh, it's not ready to drive until it's aligned. So I hope this video helped you. Check out our channel for other videos. We got dad jokes, cooking videos, traveling videos, fixing Fords, fixing Chevys, and we got more content coming. So uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Give us a subscription, a thumbs up if you liked it, a comment if you didn't. Let us know what we could have done better. If you're a mechanic and you got some great advice to put in the comments, please add it. I want your comments. I want your feedback. Other than that, thank you for watching. Y'all have a blessed day.